Hello, my name is Elisa and welcome to my project today. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, and I have to say that I'm very excited to begin this project and to share with you guys this historical figure today. I must say a little bit before we begin that whenever we do these projects, it kind of, it humbles me and it reminds me why we do them. Um, these are people that paved the way for us to live the way we live today. And I know we continue to fight for multiple rights. However, we lived in a very privileged society already and we live like this and we're able to have our rights and have access to multiple things because of the people who paved the way for us. So I just want us to remind, uh, remember that, keep that in mind. And without further ado, I will be talking about Mary Ware Dennett. Mary Ware Dennett was a sex educator. She was a suffragist. She was a reproductive rights activist. This was a woman that was years ahead of her time and she fought very hard for us to have all of the rights that we have today as women especially. She's actually the founder of the National Birth Control League. This woman made it legal for us to have birth control. Um, so, you know, we kind of look at those. Most of us are like, oh, it's just birth control. We, we have access to it. No big deal. It was a very big deal. And for her to make that possible for us changed so many lives and continues to change so many lives. So Mary was born on April 4th, 1872. This was a time that doctors could not even speak to their patients about contraception. This is a time that contraception was elite. So sex in this time and era was not allowed to be discussed. It was one of those subjects that people just refrained from ever having. You know, it wasn't allowed to be mentioned. It wasn't allowed to be really thought about. Um, it was a very, very private matter birth control, contraception, all of that again was illegal. I mean, this was a subject that wasn't even allowed to be talked about between again, your doc a doctor and their patient. And now we fast forward into today's society where sex is such an embraced subject. Everyone is talking about it. I mean, you could go to a restaurant and hear your friends talking about it. People just openly have the discussion without any thought of it. And you have to think, well, why are we so open why are we so able to have these discussions and it's because of historical figures like mary Dennett who paved the way and who made uh sex not a it's not a bad subject so my primary source for this entire project has been this book right here the sex side of life by constance chen funny enough this book is actually titled after the 26 page pamphlet that mary ware wrote for her kids and was actually published and became very famous and we'll talk about that here in a little bit but i really recommend this book if for any reason you, you want to know more about mary dennett herself um, this was a great read and had a lot of a lot of great information so Mary, again, she was born April 4th of 1872, and she was born in Worcester, uh, Massachusetts, and she was born to George and Vonnie Ware, and she was actually, fun fact, the middle child, and they say the middle child is always, like, the head strongest, like, sh they're very stubborn. I think Mary proved that right. I mean, she was a strong woman, and uh, she created amazing, amazing paths for everyone. There are no really photos of Mary in younger life than this, but Mary's father, George Ware, died of cancer when Mary was 10 years old. Her mother began organizing European tours for young girls uh, shortly after her husband died because she had to take care of her children. So Mary and her siblings were often left with their aunt, Aunt Lucia Med, who was a social reformer. So now fast forwarding um, into her younger adulthood years. Um, Mary actually joined high school in 1887 um, and she joined Miss Cappen's School for Girls in Northampton, Massachusetts and she graduated in 1891. Now from 1891 to 1893 she decided to go and join a school of art and design at Boston's Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, Massachusetts where she studied art. Mary was an incredible artist and it was perceived by all of those prizes that she won in the art community. Um, she really had made herself known and she was really known for making um, leather work. She was great with leather. 
there's actually still a lot of her work around these days and she would make like six feet tall of leather work um, with intricate designs and it was just beautiful and it's actually on display so in eventually Mary settled in Boston, Massachusetts, where she began working for the Society of Arts and Crafts, where she was able to create art exhibitions. So Mary was, again, an incredible artist, and this is where she really got to shine. Mary, fun fact, was actually pretty shy in nature, so art was a way for her to really express herself. I mean, you could see just her passion through her artwork. Mary met her husband, Hartley Dennett, in 1894 on January 20th, 1900, and they moved to Framingham, Massachusetts. So as we get deeper into Hartley and Mary's marriage, you'll see why uh, her marriage was ultimately the driving force that made her create all these new paths, and that why she brought these conversations to the table and she opened the discussions for them. But before we get into there, and the downfall of their marriage. Harley and Mary were one and one together and they were a love story for the ages. Hartley and Mary had actually come together on many occasions um, emotionally as they were writing and you kind of see throughout their letters that are in history. Um, they went from, you know, Mrs. Den or Mrs. Ware and Mr. Dennett to Mary Hartley and, and then her his nickname like Mary Marin. You see them, their love really blossom. So before we go in deeper, I really wanted to make their love known. Uh, Hartley was always known for sharing notes, writing notes at work um, when he was away all the time, poems. Uh, and I just wanted to share a little bit of what he has written Mary at one point. Oh, Mary, I wish I could write you a poem, but I can't think of aught, but I want to get home. Just think of the miles that are lying betwixt us, yet I'm not off my end of the shaft that transfixed us. And the quiver you give to year end of yarrow sends violet wings right into my morrow. Do you feel my pity pats shaking the line? I love you more stoutly today, Mary, mine. On December 23rd, 1900, Mary and Hartley welcomed their first child. Mary then had their second child, and the child fell ill and passed away at three weeks old. Trying one more time, Mary gave birth to another boy, but then she fell ill, and due to a laceration in her uterus, doctors advised that they not have any more children. Without contraception, Hartley and Mary decided to refrain from sex altogether. This eventually drove Hartley to cheat and have an affair with a woman who was already married. Hartley left and moved out, and Mary filed for divorce in 1912. Mary began working as a secretary in the Massachusetts Women's Suffrage Association from 1910 to 1914 and co-founded Twilight Sleep Association, which advocated for the use of scopolamine and morphine to ease childbirth. She served as vice president of this association until 1914. Pictured here with Mary and her two sons, and during this time, Mary is convicted of giving out information about birth control. Mary was convicted because of the pamphlet shown right now. It was written in 1915 and was 26 pages long. Mary had originally written this pamphlet for information that she wanted her sons to have. In addition, Mary began to give this information out to the public as well. This became the stepping stone to legalizing birth control, and eventually this was published in the Medical Review of Reviews in 1918. Mary changed the world forever. On July 25th, 1947, at the age of 75 years old, Mary Dennett passed away peacefully. She was a pioneer for women, a strong activist, a woman of her beliefs, and she was a force to be reckoned with. Because of her, we have contraception, we have knowledge, and we're able to actually have a conversation about the sexuality that comes so naturally to humans. Mary Dennett was an incredible woman, and I hope that she is now not forgotten. Thank you for watching my presentation day, and I look forward to watching all of yours.